Okay, so in today's video, we're we'll taking a look at how to install the Scythe Fuma 2 onto an M4 motherboard. In order to do that, there's going to be a few parts that you're going to need to achieve that. Most of them, if not all of them, are actually included in the kit itself. So you're going to be needing the long screwdriver, the two AM4 brackets, four rubber bungs, and four AMD screws. And also, optionally, your choice of thermal paste. Uh, we're going to be using probably the stuff which is included free in the kit, uh, but obviously use whichever thermal paste you have handy. So the first part is to get our M4 motherboard prepared. So we're gonna need to remove the standard backplate, plastic retention clips. And to do that, there's just four screws. So just undo those. And then remove the plastic parts, put those into a bag or something safe, just in case you ever need to use them again in the future or you need to return the motherboard for some reason. With the screws removed, you'll find that the AM4 backplate actually uh, just falls out or drops out. So if you're doing this actually inside of a PC case, then you probably want to put a little bit of tape or something on the back of this just to make it hold into place. We're going to be doing this on a flat surface. So, so the next thing to do is to get the items from the kit that we're going to need. So we're going to need the, the four plastic or rubberized pieces here. So these, each one of these goes over the top of the back plate. And you'll notice on these, there's a wider side and a narrower side with a rubber bung in there. So what you want to do is to put the wider side over the top and do that in all four positions. The next part of the job is to use these brackets. So the brackets go like this with the AM4 sections down towards the bottom here. So just line those up with the rubber bits and I'll just place it on there so you can get an idea of the layout. That is essentially the look that we're aiming for. So using the four included screws, don't use the ones from the AM4 backplate. They will not do the job correctly. And on the actual bracket itself, for AM4 and AM3, we've got these two lugs and we want to use the one towards the front. So if you line up one of them to start with, get in position and you can just manually start screwing it up a little bit. That should hold it in place a little bit better. It's slightly off balance. So as you can see, it may well fall off, but don't worry, it's fine. Just line it up, put the screw through. And if you want to, you can get it started by hand. Once you've got it started, then you can go ahead and use a screwdriver to do it the rest of the way. So if you do it till it's pretty much tight and then just a little extra turn, quarter or half a turn, just to make sure it's fully seated. And then just repeat exactly the same thing for the top section. So again, for AM4, we wanna use the hole here and here. If you're using AM3, then you'd use the other hole on that section. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, you can just line it up with the screws in position if you wanted to. And get them started by hand. Do it up pretty tight. And then again, just to turn, just to make sure it's firmed up and held into position. Now you should find when you've got the screws done up, if you lift the motherboard up, there shouldn't be any play at all. In this section, this should all be mounted very securely. So now we can go ahead and install our processor by lifting up the arm on the retention mechanism and installing the processor. So we'll go ahead and do that now. To install the processor, very simple, straightforward things to do. Just line up the writing with the writing on the socket, and then you can gently place it into position. And it should plop into place when it does. You can lower the retention arm on the side and lock it into position. The next part is to actually get the cooler itself and to mount it up against here. I'm taking for this as the assumption that you've actually already mounted the fans onto the cooler. So we'll take a look at what that looks like now. So with the fans mounted on the cooler, as you can see, we've got the slimline fan, 15 mil fan on the front and the 25 mil on the back. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could install the additional fan. In reality, there isn't a great deal of benefit in doing that. And also you, it reduces your clearance for things like IO on the back, etc., VRM clearance, that kind of thing. So that is with the fans installed. So what we're gonna to wanna to do 
is we actually need to get access to the screws, which are in these channels here and here. And by doing this, we can use the included screwdriver, which is this one. And essentially we're gonna be getting the screwdriver right down in the bottom there and going through into the screw, which if I turn this around now, you'll get an idea of how that looks. So you can see the screwdriver's gone all the way to the bottom. And if I turn it, you can see this is the section down here which needs to be turning and attaching to the brackets on the motherboard. So let's go ahead and put some thermal paste on and then we can put the cooler into position. Now is probably a very, very good time to remove this protective film on the bottom. This is designed to protect the cold plate. And there's a thin plastic film. If you actually install the cooler with that on, you will notice your temperatures will be dramatically higher than they should be as the plastic film will act as insulation. For this particular installation, we're going to be going ahead and using some MX4 because it was a nice and easy end to hand. And I will be taking this apart later for doing some testing anyway. So this is just to give you an idea of how it's done. So what we want to do is a, a very small kind of half a grain of rice in the center of the processor. Due to the fact that the FEMA 2 has a very, very flat and very conforming cold plate, you can put a blob in the middle and it will spread out quite nicely. You can, of course, if you want to, install your thermal paste however you see fit. In order to get the cooler to mount correctly and to get it lined up, this is where we're gonna be screwing into shortly. So look at the threaded screw hole there and obviously the one at the back as well. What I would suggest to do is if you actually get the cooler and kind of lower it into position and if you just aim the screw towards the actual one of the holes there and then you can then do exactly the same on the back and you should find that it just finds the uh, the level. So that's that actually in place. As you can see, the screw is still over the side there. If I spin this round a little bit, hopefully you'll be able to see. And we can see the screw on the back side as well. Is in basically sitting over the top of the actual thread. And if you look a little bit closer, you can see that the cold plate is pretty much central actually on the CPU die. So now what we can do is to get our long handle screwdriver and we can do a couple of threads up on each side. So this is the, uh, the top shot now. So if we're looking at the holes, so there's a hole there and there's a hole there. And what we want to do is just put the screwdriver down through the middle and then we can just do a couple of turns on each side. If you find that the, the screw hole isn't matching up very well, you can, if you want to, just do anti-clockwise turns until you hear it click. You may find a little bit of pressure on the top here. Might be useful just to get the screw started. There we go, that's started now so we do a couple of turns on each side don't want to get uneven pressure so again just lower the screwdriver in this is a bit difficult for me to see and film but you can get the idea so just turn the screw a few times maybe two or three and then you can go ahead and do the other side now obviously for your purposes you probably won't need to spin your motherboard around this is just for actually demonstrating how it's done. So we're gonna just do three or four more turns on each side. Now some people will probably say about this that the screws themselves are actually torqued down probably more than they actually need to be. So if you get to the point where it feels like there's enough torque on there or that the screws are done up enough and they're getting to the point where it's kind of uncomfortable to actually turn the screwdriver anymore, then you can just stop. As long as the actual CPU cooler is attached, then when you move the CPU cooler, you can see the movement actually in the bracket at the bottom, so there's no wobble or play in it, then that's absolutely fine. The last part of the process is to connect the two fan headers, which are the PWM headers here, and attach them to the motherboard. Now, on this particular board, we've got a CPU and CPU supplementary in this top corner. If for some reason you don't have that, so you can just go ahead and plug in the splitter 
into the adapter. That locks into place. Just do that for both fans and then you can use the single fan header on its own. But we're probably going to want to get a bit of extra control so we're going to use the two individuals. So we're going to plug one into here and the other one is going to go in just there right next to it. Now obviously you would want to cable manage all this, make it all look pretty etc. But uh, for our purposes this is fine. So we've got both our fan headers connected, both the fans are in and you can if you want to just make sure they don't obstruct with anything. You'll notice as well with the Scythe Fuma 2 there's absolutely brilliant RAM clearance there at least for uh, an AM4 cooler as well. So we should find that there's actually enough room to get four sticks of RAM in there without impeding on the fan too much. Obviously, do check your motherboard and your RAM for clearance. So there we go. That is our Scythe Fuma 2 installed on our AM4 motherboard. If this video has been helpful to you, don't forget to leave a like on the video. And also, if you've got any comments or questions, put, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you need any more additional help or you're struggling with this, then we do have a Discord chat, which links will be for available in the video description if you want to join us for that and we can try and help you out with your problems and issues but for now i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching